Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you're joining us from. We're glad that you're able to tune in for today's Wednesday morning glory service. Straight away, we're going to be going into our prayer of thanksgiving in our opening prayer. And we'll be reading from the book of Psalms chapter 66 and verse 16. Psalm 66 verse 16. The Bible says, I will declare what he hath done for my soul. Thank you. We give you all praise and glory. We have come this morning to declare the great give him thanks. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we appreciate you. We give you all praise and glory. Lord, we are gathered here this morning to appreciate you. We are gathered here this morning to make known the great things that you have done for us, for the gift of life, for preservation, for health. Lord, for seeing us into the end of the year 2020, we give you all praise and glory. We honor and appreciate you for being our a right hand man throughout the year 2020 taking us through every storm taking us through every challenge we emerged victorious by the mere fact that we are alive this morning we come to appreciate you for giving us the privilege to be in your presence once again we want to give you all praise and glory you alone deserves all praise we have come to make known the great things that you have done in our lives in the lives of our children in the lives of our family in our career oh lord we cannot take it for granted it is only an ingrate that will be quiet at a time like now and fail to acknowledge that it can only be god's hand at work in his life we come to appreciate you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we have prayed. Amen. Now that we have given thanks, we qualify to ask and we'll be welcoming his divine presence to dwell with us this morning from the book of Psalms chapter 139 verse 7. Psalms 139 verse 7. The Bible says, whither shall I go from thy spirit or whither shall I 
flee from thy presence. We'll be going before the Lord this morning and we'll be praying. Lord, honor us with your presence. Cause us not to go away from your presence, but cause your presence to tabernacle with us this morning. Let us go before the Lord and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we welcome your awesome presence to dwell with us this morning. Cause it to richly dwell with us this morning. Cause your presence to overshadow us this morning. That as we start this morning glory and throughout the entire session, oh Lord, throughout the entire service, that your presence will dwell with us. Your presence will dwell with us. Where the Bible says that your presence gives rest. Your presence gives direction. Your presence gives peace. Lord, cause your presence to dwell with us. Minus your presence this morning, this will be a mere gathering. Oh Lord, we ask for your presence, for the word to take root in our lives, for the word to find a resting place in our lives, for the viewers to live better than they came. Oh Lord, your presence needs to be present. Lord, cause your presence to dwell with us. Cause your presence to dwell with us. That as people will be tuning in, Lord Jesus, whatever it is that they came in with, that your presence will move mightily in their lives. That your presence will cause will cause their own Oh Lord Jesus, to be peace, oh Lord, in the hearts of men, oh Lord Jesus. That as we will be gathering, oh Lord, your presence will be present. Your presence will be present, oh Lord. Your presence makes for the difference. Cause your presence to dwell with us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we have prayed. We'll be praying for the viewers who will be tuning in this morning from the book of Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 8. Zechariah chapter 10 verse 8. The Bible says, I will hiss for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them and they shall increase as I have increased. We'll be praying this morning that Lord hiss out to men and women from all corners of the globe and cause them to tune in for this morning glory service. Let us go before the Lord and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for the viewers, oh Lord, as many that are to be a part and parcel of today's morning glory service. We ask you, O oh Lord, to hiss out to them. Hiss out to them. Hiss out to them, O oh Lord. Hiss out to them from their offices. Hiss out to them from their beds, O oh Lord. Hiss out to them wherever they are, whatever it is that is occupying their mind, whatever it is that is clouding their ability to tune in. Lord, we ask you to hiss out to them. We pray, O oh Lord, for smooth transmission. We pray, O oh Lord, for smooth transmission. There shall be no technological hitches, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh Lord, that you call them out from wherever they are, from the north, from the west, from the east, from the south, we begin to call them forth. We begin to call them forth. Hiss out to them, O oh Lord. Hiss out to them. Hiss out to them, Lord Jesus. As many, O oh Lord, that are to be a part and parcel of the blessing that you have packaged in today's morning glory, cause them not to miss out on it. Cause them not to miss out on it. We begin to call them forth from the different professions. We begin to call them forth. The doctors, the lawyers, the IT experts, the engineers, oh Lord, wherever they are, the farmers, the teachers, we begin to call them for that they will gather to hear your word this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. We'll be praying for the word that will be coming forth this morning from the book of Luke chapter 5, verse 5 to 6. The Bible says, and Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Verse 6 says, And when he had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish, and their net break. We'll be going before the Lord this morning, and we pray that, Father, as your word comes forth this morning, cause us to let it all down. Cause us to let it all down. Whatever it is that we are holding on to and struggling on our own strength, that, Lord, we let it all down to you this morning. At thy word, we let it all down to you this morning. Morning. Let us go before the Lord and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for the word that will be coming forth this morning. Lord Jesus, at thy word, at thy word, O oh Lord, we are letting it all down. Everything that we are carrying as a burden, everything that we are doing depending on our own strength, as your word will be coming forth this morning, cause us to let it all down. Cause us to let it all down. Cause us to be able to heed and to yield to the word that will be coming forth this morning. Your word gives strength. Your word causes for speed. Lord, cause us to let it all down. Anything that we are doing, relying 
relying on our own ability, anything that we are doing, relying on our own strength, as your word will be coming forth this morning, cause us to let it all down, cause us to yield to the available power in your word, cause us to yield to the strength that your word gives, cause us to yield, oh Lord, we might have been toiling for the whole of 2020, but as your word will be coming forth this morning, that word that will usher us into a net breaking experience, that word that will usher us into a net breaking experience, that word that will usher us into rest, oh Lord, cause us to let down every net, cause us to let down every net, those that have been toiling for the whole of the year, those that have been working on their own strength and ability for the rest of the year, Lord, cause us to let it down, cause us to let it down for a net breaking experience, for a net breaking experience, cause us to let it all down, that as the word comes, we will be able to yield to it, we will be able to yield to the power that is in your word, and enjoy the blessings of a net breaking experience in the mighty name of Jesus we have prayed. We'll be committing the servant of God. The Bible lets us know that the priests continue that that the word that continuously comes forth, the priest continually, continuously lay it on the altar every morning. This is the bright time. It is early in the morning. We'll be praying that, Lord, as your servant comes forth this morning, cause the word that he will speak, oh Lord, to be a word of the season. Let us go before the Lord and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Bible says that your altar will continuously burn. Your altar will continuously burn. Lord, and that the priests shall burn on it every Every morning shall burn wood on it every morning lord as your servant comes this morning we ask oh precious father that you will anoint his tongue that you will grant him the word of the season lord you will never allow your word to return to you void you will never allow your word to return to you void oh lord cause this altar to continuously burn cause the servant to continuously speak the word of the season anoint him anoint him oh precious father cause out of him to flow oh lord and the standing to flow wisdom and a word of the season in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we have prayed. Let us go before the Lord and appreciate him because he has heard and answered our prayers. Father, we thank you. We give you all praise and glory. Thank you because we know you have heard and answered our prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Let's take this worship song together this morning. No other name but the name of Jesus. No other name but the name of the Lord. No other name. No other name than the name of Jesus. No other name, no other name than the name, the name of the Lord. No other name, no other name than the name of Jesus. No No other name, no other name, 
the Lord with no other name. The name that is above every other name. We sing no other name. The name above every other name. Let's lift up our voice this morning in worship to the Lord because there's no other name than the name of Jesus. The name that is above every other name. Jesus, we give you glory. We worship and honor you this morning. Receive our worship. Receive our adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshiped him. Praise the Lord. No other name than the name of Jesus. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. You are all welcome to today's morning glory service on the behalf of God and his servant. I'll be leading us in our prayer session. I'm sure we are prepared to pray together. I read from the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. He said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, who by the abundance of his mercy has begotten us unto a lively hope. He has begotten us again unto a lively hope. Praise the Lord. You will agree with me that as difficult as some, some of the chapters of your life through your journey this year, 2020, might have been, that the mercy of God, the faithfulness of God is still the reason why the last chapter is still captivating, why the life last chapter is still full of testimonies. God didn't allow any of the chapters, what you went through in March, in April, that was unpleasant. He didn't allow it to corrupt the last chapter of your story in the year 2020. We'll be saying, Father, we thank you because through you we still find hope. We still find reason to rejoice. We still find reason to celebrate. I want you to lift your voice this morning and give him thanks that Father, thank you because through you we still find reason to rejoice and experience your hope through our journey this year. 
Let's lift up our voice and give him thanks. Amen. Father, we thank you. We still have reason to rejoice. We still have reason to celebrate. Despite the chapters, the experiences we have had, the greatest of it all is our experience of hope. The greatest of it all is our experience of hope. Lord, we thank you. Through it all, hope isn't been scarce to each and every one of us. We have experienced hope. We have experienced hope in a unique dimension. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory from the depth of our hearts. Father, through this journey, we have still experienced hope. We rejoice in your salvation. We rejoice in your faithfulness, O oh God, because you didn't allow anything to corrupt the last chapter of our story in the year 2020. Father, it is still captivating. It's full of testimonies, joy, and celebration. Father, because of your hope that we have experienced through this journey, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Father, through this journey, oh God, we have experienced hope. We have experienced hope. It has been our anchor. Lord, it has been our anchor. We glorify you, Jesus. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful. You didn't allow all the chapters that weren't pleased. You didn't allow all the chapters that were full of difficulties to corrupt this last chapter, to corrupt this last phase. You have allowed your word to be superior to any situation. Your word that says the end of every matter is better than the beginning thereof. Lord, this is our testimony. This is our testimony. We give you glory. Throughout the journey, your word isn't been scarce to us. Your word isn't been scarce to us. You have fed us with your word. Father, you have fed us time without number. Lord, our faith is built day by day to where we are today. We give you all the glory, Jesus. We exalt your We see more of what you have done. And Lord, you have done well. You have done well beyond what we can even explain. We give you honor and adoration. Thank you, great and mighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have given him thanks. The year 2020 has been a year with lineup of events. God has scheduled different events for each and every one of us. I will be praying according to Hebrew chapter 12 and verse 2. You say, looking unto Jesus, the altar and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise the Lord. Like I said, it is a year that has been with lineup of events as scheduled by the Lord for each and every one of us. Just like our faces differs, that is how the event that God scheduled for each and every one of us differed. Those that will finish must be deliberate to look unto Jesus because he is the author and finisher. Anything he begins, he finishes. If you will finish what you were scheduled for in 2020, then the need to look unto the one that authors and finishes. We'll be saying, Father, as the curtain of the year 2020 come to a close, help me to finish the specific assignment designated to me. Help me to finish the specific assignment designated to me. Let's lift up our voice as we pray. Father, as the curtain of the year 2020 comes to a close, I pray that Lord help me I am looking up to you this day to help me finish the specific assignment, the specific assignment, oh God, that you've designated to me. Father, what you've scheduled for me to do in 2020, I will not carry it over to 2021 because according to your plan, I am meant to do it this year. Father, I pray that you help me. I pray that you help me as the curtain of the year 2020 comes to a close. Help me to finish the specific assignment. The specific assignment. Those specific assignments. Some of those specific assignments is that there are souls that you are to save this year. 
praise the Lord. You'll be asking the Lord the specific assignment designated to you. Assignment that you were to carry out this year, 2020. The Lord, I look unto you. You are the author and the finisher. Every work you began, you finish. Father, let me also finish my specific assignment. My specific assignment. That I will not drag my feet to the things, to the shadows, Father, that you have spelled out for me in 2020. I will not drag my feet to it. I will not drag my feet to it. Father, in the few days remaining, let me, let me, as I look up to you, help me to finish. Help me to finish. Help me to finish. Every specific assignment, oh God, you are my our perfect example. You are a finisher of whatever you started. You are a finisher of whatever you started. Oh Lord, I pray as I look up to you, as I look unto you, let every specific assignment, oh God, that you have outlined and scheduled for me to carry out in 2020, let me also finish it. Let me also finish my own in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who finish are those who are crowned. Those who finish are those who receive trophy from the Lord. Father, help me to finish. Help me to finish in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you help me to finish in the name of Jesus Christ. It is crucial for me to finish, oh God, because I am not judged by what I began. I will be judged by what I'm able to finish. Lord, every specific assignment outlined to each and every one of us. We look unto you. We look unto you, our perfect example. The one who begins and finishes. The one who begins and finishes. The one who does not procrastinate to the assignment in his hand. Father, let me finish my own. Let me finish my own assignment. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Hallelujah. We will not drag to our schedule assignment. Amen. Those who look unto Jesus Christ receives grace all the time to finish their schedule assignment because he finishes his own. Anything he begins, he finishes. Every assignment entrusted into our hands, we will finish it in Jesus' name. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, it says, But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, he has suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthens, and settles you. After you have suffered a while, God makes you perfect. God strengthens you, and God establishes you and settles you. We'll be praying this morning that, Father, the hour has come. Settle me. Strengthen me. Perfect all that concerns me. Establish me and settle me. Lift up your voice as we pray. Father, I ask, O oh God, perfect all, all that concerns me. The hour has come. This is my hour. The hour of perfection has come. Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle me. Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle me. The hour of my own settlement is finally here. Lord, I pray that you perfect. I pray that you establish. I pray that you strengthen and settle me in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, behold your precious people. Any area that we are still unsettled, Father, the hour of settlement is finally here. I pray, O oh God, perfect establish, strengthen, and settle me. Perfect, strengthen, establish, and settle me in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray on this special day that you give me my own testimony of perfection, of strength, of settlement, and establishment in the name of Jesus. God of all perfection, God of all perfection, you said in your word that what concerns us, you will perfect. Psalms 138, verse 8, it said, The Lord will perfect that which concerns you. Oh Lord, we pray this morning. Whatever is a concern in the lives of your people, whatever is a concern, God of perfection, perfect every concern. 
perfect every concern, settle every unsettled issue. Ask the Lord every unsettled issue that have caused sleepless night. Lord, settle it. The hour of settlement has come. The hour of settlement has come. Eliko Sibaya Tayanda. Father, every unsettled issue, Lord, settle. Oh God, settle every unsettled issue. Lord, we ask for your strength. We ask for your strength in all aspects of our lives, oh God. As we navigate into the year ahead, the hour has come. Lord, strengthen me. Lord, strengthen me. In the name of Jesus, strengthen me. Establish me, oh God. Establish me, oh God. I commit my family to you this morning, oh God. Lord, I pray for perfection. I pray for strength. I pray for settlement. I pray for perfection. I pray for strength. I pray for settlement. Thank you, Father. I give you glory, mighty God. I give you praise. Let's lift up our voice and give praise to the Lord. Let's give adoration to God of all perfection. Lord, we give you praise and honor. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord as we welcome us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Amen. To him be all the glory. Amen. To him be all the adoration. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Blessed be your name. Blessed be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be. Blessed be your name. Thank you this morning. Thank you. We glorify you. Yes, we exalt you. Amen. We bless your holy name. Yes, Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Thank you for your loving kindness. Amen. Thank you for bringing us to the last month of this year. Amen. Thank you for bringing us to the last days yes, of the year 2020. Amen. We do not take it for granted. Amen. We celebrate your hand that has been strong. Many have seen affliction this year, but you have kept us in your perfect will. Amen. You have kept us in your perfect will. Amen. Even those who were sick, Amen. you have healed them. Amen. To you be all the glory. Amen. To you be all the adoration. Amen. Many lost things, but they didn't lose their life. Amen. Many have lost things, 
but they never lose their life. And he that is joined to the living, there is hope. Therefore, there is hope of restoration for everyone. Amen. We give you praise. Yes. We give you glory. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is my prayer that we will be able to walk the talk. Amen. It is my earnest prayer that we will be able to walk the talk. Amen. Please sit down in our various homes. Walk the talk in what sense? You will always see and you will always hear a Christian quoting scriptures such as better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof. You will always hear within the Christian dome that God reserves his best for the very last. But unfortunately, the same period we know and understand that God loaded with the best is the same period that we are less sensitive to spiritual things. That's why it is my prayer that we'll be able to do what? Walk the talk. Walk the talk. Believe what we confess. Act along our confessions. And therefore, that is why this money, uh, uh, voice of restoration, money, glory services will not close. It will be on throughout the year. Other services activity may, may be stepped down a bit, but money glory will be on. Voice of restoration, money glory will be on throughout as a way of keeping tabs on us spiritually so that at least when we wake up in those days when we have the money glory, we are strengthened from the money. We will not lay down our guard completely. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. So I welcome you to this morning's segment of Voice of Restoration, Money, Glory, Service. Amen. You shall be restored. Amen. The reason why God speaks to people is that he speaks to them to restore them. The voice of God is voice of restoration. Jesus is a voice of restoration on the earth. The Son of God is a voice of restoration. He said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He said, and it shall come to pass that even if the dead hear the voice, he will live. So I command this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that whatever is lost in the past in your life begin to establish your repositioning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your head shall be restored. Amen. Your life shall be restored. Amen. Your family shall be restored. Amen. Your business Up your spirit, please. Whatever the locust, the caterpillar, the canker worm, thing that you cannot even share with anyone, whatever you have lost, I command restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Restoration of your hope, restoration of your faith, restoration of your expectation. I command them to be revitalized in Jesus' precious name. We have been talking about finishing strong finishing the year very strong. And this subject is very crucial because the way you end a year set a pace for how you will start a new one. So it is very important that we finish strong. And we look at preparation because I'm running up on that today so I'm recapitulating them. all we have said or all we have been able to learn. And we said, in finishing strong, among many things that has to be definite, is our preparation. And we said the preparation is in twofold. 
The first fold is the preparation that you derive from what happened in the past. And I said, even that is subdivided into two. There is where you succeed and there is where you fail in your past. Where you succeed, you prepare for the year ahead by giving thanks to God. Where you have succeeded in the previous year or in the previous activity. You give thanks to God. Like I was sharing on Sunday, in the, in, in the sermon of that day, the Lord inspired me with a word that a miracle is the end of every struggle of a believer. And our gratitude start a new phase. Praise God. Amen. You end a struggle or a movement of a believer or a work of faith of a believer by a miracle. God crowned it with miracle. Then you set the pace for the next one by your gratitude. Praise God. So you learn from those areas where you have succeeded. You give thanks to God. You now come to focus on where it seemed that you failed. And then, and I said, pay close attention to those areas. And I pleaded with you, don't condemn yourself. Don't be judgmental. Don't defend. Don't blame anyone. Take absolute responsibility in all the areas where you fail. And I said, when you do that, you will draw lesson of life. So, your bag of gratitude on your past, your, your bag of preparation on your past will be your gratitude and the lesson of life that you have learned from where you have failed. And I said, that said to that first leg. The second leg now is that you begin to look into the future. And I said, we do that by catching a vision for the year ahead. Because where there is no vision, there is no future. The people perish because they lack vision. And then we began to look on the subject of vision. We defined it as the personal revelation or the unfolding of God's plan and purpose for your life. That's what vision is all about. And what eyes is to your movement is what vision is to assessing your future. What eyes is to the movement of your body. Is what vision is. Vision is the compass of life. Vision is what you use to navigate the future. Praise God. And then along the line we began to see how God communicates. We even talk about the reason why God will communicate a vision to you. And then we said one of the way God communicates vision is via his voice via his voice. And uh, in assessing his voice, we began to look, talk about, among many things, the help of the Holy Spirit. The help of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit has the ministry that is threefold. He has uh, the, the, the one aspect of his ministry when it comes to revelation or vision is that it has a ministry that he will guide you to all what is truth. He will unfold. He will give you, he will make sense of the thing that is to happen or about to happen. And then he will make sense of the thing that is ongoing. And he will make sense of the thing God has said to you. And that make his ministry very powerful. And then we move there to how then do we covenantly or spiritually position ourselves to be able to benefit from the help or the ministry of the Holy Ghost, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And we dealt with that one in the last teaching. The first one was we must be quiet. We must learn to be quiet. We must learn to be quiet. We must learn to be quiet. Because the voice of God is a small, still voice. You can get all this teaching on our channel or on our Facebook. 
and then you go through all these series. What I've paraphrased now is almost uh, seven lessons. That's what I've tried to recapitulate with you. Quietness is very important. And this quietness does not mean you don't talk. It simply means sensitivity of your spirit. Sensitivity of your spirit. Your spirit man has to be sensitive. Because voice are still small. We look at that of uh, First King chapter 19 and we saw that uh, when Elijah was asked to guard himself for unto the mount the Bible said the first thing that came was a big mighty wind that could remove cloak destroy tree. He said but the Lord was not there. Followed the, the wind was an earthquake, he said, but the voice of the Lord was not there. After that was a fire, but the voice of the Lord was not there. But later there come a small steel voice. A small steel voice. There are things that make the loudest noise around our destiny. But the voice of God may not be there. The voice of God may not be there. For the word of God says, when God speaks, he speaks peace to his people. So we need to be sensitive to be able to grasp what God is saying to us concerning the future. What God is saying. And you know, even the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. So we need to come under the frequency of quietness of the spirit. In other words, sensitivity of the spirit. For us to grab what God is saying about to us about about vision or about his plan and purpose for the future now i haven't learned that let me just read one scripture in uh, isaiah chapter to establish that after reading first king chapter 19 uh, we close that day we need also to read isaiah chapter 30 isaiah chapter 30 very powerful scripture. Isaiah 30. And verse number 21. He said, And thy ear shall hear a word behind thee. Saying, This is the way, walk ye in, walk ye in it. When you turn to the right, when you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left, and your ears shall hear, and thy ear shall hear. You see that? A word behind you. A word behind you. So the, 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 my point here is the ear God, the spiritual air God has given us has ability to pick the voice of God. If our spirit man is quiet. If our spirit man is quiet. So the problem is not our ears. The problem is our spirit. Mm. If you look at the same Isaiah chapter, the same chapter, chapter 13 and verse 15. Just go back a bit, verse 15. He said, For thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. He said, But you will not. You see, 
He said, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved, in quietness and in confidence. You see that? The quietness come to enable you to pick the voice of God through your ear, downloaded to your spirit man. And when you pick this voice, it injects confidence in you. You know, the Bible says, He that increased knowledge increased what? Strength. He said, but we will not. But I pray that from today, we will learn quietness. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. we will learn to be quiet in our spirit, man. It goes beyond speaking. It goes like I'm ministering to you, I'm speaking, but the condition of my heart right now, I'm very quiet. And uh, somebody say, oh, you are talking and you say you are quiet. Yes, I'm quiet. I'm quiet from other issues of life. I'm quiet. That's why if you ask a preacher, most of the time they minister to you. They may have one scripture to start the talk, but as they were going, the scripture will be multiplying. I've just read a verse now, just now. It was not in my preparation. But as I'm speaking to you, my spirit is so quiet and directional to the sensitivity of the Holy Ghost. And he reminded me. Of this scripture. This is not in my note. That's why you see I paused for a while. And I say if you go back to verse 15. The Holy Ghost brought it to me. Many people are in church. But they are, they are, they are clapping in church. And they are dancing. But their mind is still on their business. Their mind is somewhere very far away. Their mind is not in what they do. I, even in your own life. I want to put it to you. There are many times you are in your house. But your spirit man is not sensitive to the environment in which you are in. That's why instead of carrying your handbag, you went and picked your slippers. And, and you wonder, in fact, you have reached outside till somebody will tell you, what are you carrying, what are you doing with slippers? Your hand is working, but your, 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 your spirit man is not sensitive, is not sensitive mm -hmm. to the environment in which you are. Mm -hmm. I've wear different, uh, different leg of shoes and I reach outside before I know. It's possible for you to be physically present, but spiritually to be absent. So when we say quietness, it means discipline your spirit man to focus on the sensitivity, to focus on the Holy Ghost. And that's what we call sensitivity to the voice of the spirit. Praise the Lord. Now we move to the second one, spiritual position, where you put yourself for you to be able to receive. Now, and that is worship. Worship is adoring God. Worship is hallowing God. Hallowing God. You know, in our last prayer, Jesus was teaching the disciples. He said, when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven, acknowledge the soul. Hallow be thy name. Your name. Adoration, the people, the person you know, and the, let me say this, the presence, not to talk of his contribution. People don't go to where they are insulted. People don't go to where they are insulted. God Almighty don't speak to people who murmur. Sorry is one of the first characteristics or a God doesn't speak to people who murmur about his name. Hallowed be thy name. You say God is not good, so why should he talk to you? So that he can add to your bad. Hallowed be thy name. Adoring God. Bless his holy name. Worshiping him. These are platforms that guarantee the presence of God. And the closer you are to a speaker, the closer you are likely, I mean, the better you hear. Our worship, our worship life, our adoration to God goes a long way to bring the presence of God closer to us. And therefore, it's like putting our head on the chest of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. 
So you have to live a life of worship, a life that adore God. Learn to sing, learn to sing. Have you not noticed that those who are in the world, when they hear music, worldly music, they jump like, like at war. Every spirit enjoy music. Every music, every spirit walk with music. Every spirit enjoy music because music is a rhythm that exhort people. It communicate. That's why something happened to you. Like uh, there's a particular song when I hear uh, when I hear that song, I remember what I was going through. There, there is power in music. And that's why you find that most great men of God, they want to play. Sometimes they get on the altar. They either want a new song, apart from the one we have sung in worshiping God, or they get somebody on the organ or the keyboard and they tell him, give it a gentle uh, touch, a soft touch. You know, it, it has a way of inspiring spiritual inspirations. Music does that. Especially when it is coming from our spirit man. Our spirit man. Hymns and psalms are very good for this. That's why you find out that when you hear blessed assurance, there's something that, that steers you up in a, direct, in a spiritual direction. So as we are at home right now, as we are celebrating, as you are in your car, in, at the beach, wherever you are in your bedroom, make sure there is music playing. Make sure there is a low music play. It will inspire you. It will inspire your spirit man. And that's why um, I want us to look at an account in uh, in Second King. Second King, chapter three. Second King, sorry. Are you there? Second King. Chapter 3 and from verse 15. Let me read the account for you. There were, there were some king who at the point of confusion and they needed a direction. Worship, elevate your spiritual heights. I you know in most cases, the taller we are, the better we can see things that are far off. Mm -hmm. What high shoe is to ladies is what worship is to a believer. You know, most ladies you know, you think you know their height. You are joking. You don't know. You see them, they are tall. And they wear it very well. They gain extra height. The same way, worship Elevate or increase your spiritual heights where you can gaze and see what is ahead better. So this king, uh, they had an issue which they are not definite. Remember we said the Holy Ghost make things plain. In verse 10, let me start from verse 10. He said, and the king of Israel said, Alas, that the Lord had called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord of him? We don't know what the future holds. We've not seen January 5th. We've not seen January 10th. We've not seen July 13th. We've not seen October 2021. We've never seen it before. But there is someone who made them. He said, these are the day that the Lord has made. So, how do we know what January holds so that we may know what to do? That was their case. But they knew that God knows. And then they know if God knows, he will tell his prophet. He said he will not do anything without telling his prophet. So they were looking for the prophet of God who could tell them the mind of God for the year ahead, for the uncertainty that was before them. He said that we may inquire 
hear a prophet of the Lord, that we may inquire of the Lord by him. You see that? By him. We may inquire of the Lord by him. The Holy Ghost know the plan of God. So we can spiritually position ourselves to inquire what the Lord has for us in the year ahead. And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which pour water on the hand of Elijah. And Joseph had said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. May you go down. May you humble yourself. They went down to him. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophet of thy father and to the prophet of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat. May your presence be regarded. Amen. Mm. The king of Judah, I will not look towards thee, nor see thee. Wow, powerful. But now, I want to see what God is saying. I want to hear what God is saying. I want to communicate the mind of God. So he has a trade. He has a tool. If it is our day, he has a software that he normally uses. He has an app that he always uses to hear the voice of God. Just like you check your bank. Uh, you know, this day we have a way of going to the bank when they claim they lock it. You know, bank in those days, when they close their door, you can't transact. But with the modern technology, who give, who give a damn when they close? You don't even want to see their staff. Hmm? You just go to your phone and tap your heart and then go to the inside the bank where they claim they hire G4S and every S. And you go there and take your money and you know, you know it's a mystery. The door is closed. But to you who have a special app who is IT compliance, you go into the bank, bring your money to return it back. Return the chain without talking to anyone. Jehoshaphat and say, I have an app. Sorry. Um, Elisha said, I have what? I have. And uh, my software is worshipping God. Praising his name. He said, but now bring me a mystery. Bring me a mystery. May you understand what I'm teaching this morning. Because... It is so relevant in our days. You go to Kenya Airways, you go to an airline and book your flight without talking to anyone. And uh, what did he say? But now bring me a minstrel, and it came to pass. When the min minstrel played, are you saying that? It came to pass. Not when the minstrel arrived, when he played. When he played that the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. So we can always move the hand of God when we hallow his name. He moved the hand of God. It was not the face of the mystery. It was the plain. And he said, Thus said the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus said the Lord, ye shall not see wind, neither shall you see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. That ye may drink, both ye and your cattle, and your beast. Praise God. I read, uh, uh, I read uh, another translation for you from verse 14. It said, Elisha said, as God of the angels' armies lives, and before whom I stand ready to serve, if it weren't for the respect I have for the Jehoshaphat, or for Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I will not give you the time of the day, but considering bearing, uh, but considering, bring me a mystery. And then there was a there was a a bracket open. That's why I emphasize. See, when the mystery play, you see, it's not when the mystery apply, 
it was an action from the Misrael. When the Misrael played, the power of God came on Elisha. When you worship God, the power of God come upon you. And what that power does, among many things, it could rot healing when it comes. That's why they say God does fearful things in praise. Who is like the O Lord among the God? Fearful in praise, doing wonders. When the hand of God come upon you, among the things he empower you to do is ability to have, to hear his voice, to hear what God is saying, either concerning the future, the present, or about the past. And the hand of God came upon him. I see the hand of God come upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he then said, God's word. Dig ditches over all this valley. Here is what will happen. You see that? Here is what will happen. Here is what will happen. When the hand of God came upon, when the hand of God come upon a man, it take him to the realm of the supernatural. And the realm of the supernatural, when you are there, you are able to decode what the future holds. You will not miss your blessing. Amen. Come on, I said you will not miss your blessing. Amen. You will not go to next year guessing with guessing what. 2021 will not be a casino hall for you. Amen. It will be a place where you are so definite, so certain. Amen. Because the hand of God will come upon you. Amen. The hand of God will come upon you. Amen. Where your enemy left you, they will not find you there. Amen. Where situation left you in 2021, arrears, all that, God will take you to a higher height where you are able to have the right view Amen. for right possession. Amen. And you know, revelation is good. Revelation is very good. Very good. But much more better when revelation can spawn you to action, to obedience. Praise God. I see God being, uh, bringing you to a higher platform. I'm sure many of you want to get to that higher platform. You know, when God wants to deliver the future, he always calls you higher. So worship is a way of wearing a spiritual high shoe to enhance your natural height in the realm of the spirit. You say, come up here, and I will show you things that will happen hereafter. Come up here, come up here, come up here, come up here. And when he came, he had a great voice. It take a great voice to make a great year. It take a great voice to maximize a great year that the Lord has given to you. It is well with your soul. And finally, the last one, but not the least for your life, you will hear more from other great preachers who are higher than us. Amen. Amen. The last one for this teaching on finishing strong, the last position where you stand. Remember, this position is not a place. These positions are attitudes. These positions are character. These positions are culture. The last one is meekness. 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 The Holy Spirit cannot stand pride. The Holy Spirit cannot stand pride. So you need a spiritual position of meekness for the Holy Ghost to be able to guide you to all truths. What does it mean to be meek here? Don't come to God when you have already made your mind. Don't come to God when you've already made, your, made, made up your mind. You hear people say, but Lord, I ask whether this man is my husband. No, you've already made him your husband. You only came to God to rubber stamp it. To, to sanction what you are saying. You didn't ask with meekness. So in this context, meekness is ability to come to God with empty hearts. On any subject. What do I mean by empty heart? Uh, nothingness. You don't have anything to say. You are at the point whereby you are neutral. But in most cases, we claim we go to God. There is one thing about uh, 
outcome of some of our experience. It justify what the state of our heart was before we went to the Lord. You know, David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So if you are back on any time, say you have prayed about it and you end up in want, there is a question mark. Emptiness. You go to God without uh, a stake on a matter. You, you need to be meek. You need to be meek. We saw an example of a man who went to Jesus and said, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus told him. We saw another one who came to Jesus and said, Jesus, I have done everything and I don't know what to do. What is the best thing to do in this situation? Jesus said, oh, you want to know? All right. Go and sell all that you have and follow me. What did they say concerning the man? The Bible said the man went away sorrowful. He was full of sorrow. You know why? He has an answer within him. That's why the answer from Jesus was annoying him. You remember the, the man called Naaman? He went for a healing. And the man of God said to him, Go to River Jordan and dip yourself seven times. You know the complaint, what he said? I dare no better river in my home. I have a swimming pool built by Israeli. Hmm? Built by what? An Israeli. So is that one not better to be close to healing than the water that crocodile have died inside? There are better rivers at home. As long, you know, there are things we go to God, but we are not open enough for God to alter. I mean, for God's word to take preeminent. We already made up our mind. We live in, a, in emotion. We demand decision on our own. That's why you hear people praying some funny, funny prayer. Lord, if this is your will. No, be sure of his will. It's in the Bible. The reason why you are casting doubt is that you have an option. Praise God. You hear somebody say, I go to church, the pastor was preaching me. He has made up the kind of message you want to hear before he left his home. It's going to be hip-hop message. Say yeah. Say yeah. You are there. But the pastor started by saying, this stealing of yours. <laughs> the reason why things are not working well, you look like a cost person. It could be as a result of stealing. And he had just told the of paper yesterday from office. And the pastor said, the cause of the Lord is in the house of a thief. He said, you see, he's calling me a thief. No, you will have sit at home since you have an answer. I always tell people, if your pastor doesn't preach you, then God is not speaking to you. <laughs> It's not speaking to you. If the message doesn't hit you, how does it refine you? Praise God. I said, praise God. You hear people pick offenses in church and they, they, they walk away because they are proud. They want a God they can pocket. They want a pastor that should do what they want, that should turn deaf eyes to their atrocity. And they have forgotten that even the pastor himself He's being hit by God's word. <laughs> That's why Paul said, after I preach, I might not be a castaway. That means the preaching the pastor is even making himself. He himself has to praise him. He has to praise him. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that is what I've made places we call church today. Full of people that look like they are not going anywhere. Because it is them at work that remain in the church. It is them at their home that is still in church. It is them in their tradition that is in the church. But you know, Paul said, he said, I beseech you, brethren, be ye transformed by the renew of your mind. Be ye not conformed to this world. There are too many proud people in church. Too many. We have too many proud people in church. And that's why grace is not available. Somebody say, how do you know, pastor? They don't change. Many are not changing. Apart from the fatness of the body, 
There is nothing that justifies they were ever in the presence of God. He said, they look unto him and they were lighting and their faces were not ashamed. If your garment is shape, full of shame, then there is no evidence that you look to God. There is no evidence because everyone that look unto him, their faces were lighting. They were not ashamed. There is no evidence if there is no progress in your life and you know it like I know my own. If there is no progress in my life, I don't need anyone to tell me I'm not in touch with God. Because what did the Bible say? He give grace to the meek and he receives the proud. What did Paul say about grace? He said, I am what I am by the grace of God. I came behind, but I labor more than on them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was bestowed upon me. So, when you are not making progress, grace is not available for you. And why was grace not available to you? Spiritual, a spiritual cross-examination or test indicate there is an iota of pride in you. I'm not the one who says you are proud. Because he gives grace to who? To the meek. And he receives the pride. Praise God. You need to be meek. You need to be meek for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And I want to take you to an example that we always found, uh, find in our life on a daily basis, including me. There are times the Holy Ghost will tell you, pick this bag. And you are going to office tomorrow. He will tell you, get up, pick this checkbook and put it in your bag. He you say, when we wake up tomorrow, we will pick it. Trust you me. You get to office, when the check is needed, it's not there. And say, so, oh, something told me. There is nothing like something. It is the Holy Ghost. He teach you, he guide you things to come. He know how your tomorrow will be. He instructed you while you're on the bed. Take this thing and put it in your bag. But you see, I'm just giving you an element of the pride. I'm saying, you say, ah, I will do it tomorrow when I wake up. And the teacher is here to guide you, to make sense of tomorrow for you. He has seen it that you will be eating, uh, will be rushing for food in the morning. Your attention will be on the food. Since you are, you are, you are, you are, you are a gluttony, you will be after the tea and chapati you will pack. And then you won't pack the check. So he's telling you ahead. By your nature, I'm the one who strengthens your infirmity. He said, for we, do not, we say, for we do not know what to pray for, but God, the Holy Spirit, helpeth our infirmity. He has already seen your weakness and it brings strength. We will say, no, I will do it tomorrow. That can grieve the Holy Spirit because you know the consequence of you not having that check with you may cost you. It may cost you your job. So he grieve him. If you are talking to someone and is making none of what you are saying, do you continue to talk with him? No, you keep quiet. You keep quiet. I pray the voice of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will not be quiet on you Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we need to be mixed. Psalm 25 and verse 9. Psalm 25 and verse 9. I've been there. You have been there. As I'm saying now, you know how many times you get, oh, something told me. There is nothing called something inside you. What is inside you is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is inside you. He's the one guiding you. He said, I will send you the comforter. But we don't listen to him. You've had women regretting. And that man, one day I went to church. The pastor said this. One day I was fasting. God told me this. When God told you, were you not full of pride? You say you are from the same place. And the devil know, and God, the Holy Ghost know, marriage does not succeed because you are from the same place. So we are from the same place. When God told this man that drop you and he doesn't get into church, he's not a man that you should commit your life to. What did you say? You say, but at least he bring me. Okay. Somebody who hates your who hate your creator. I don't know why we celebrate the creature forever. Praise God. I said, praise God. The Lord is on your side. The Lord is on your side. The Holy Ghost will teach the meek. Are you there? Yes, uh, the, you remember the Holy Ghost is the teacher of the world? Yes. He is the teacher of the world. The Bible is written by his inspiration. So he's the greatest teacher. 
of the word of God. Psalm 25. And then we, we believe God that we are going to finish strong this year. Amen. Verse 9. What did they say in your own Bible? The meek. The meek. The meek will he teach. Another translation says, the humble will he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his way. You see the meek? The meek will accept, we assess divine guidance in making judgment. In the, the word judgment here, making assessment. Looking at things, over, have an overview of things and make the best of it. Praise God. And he will teach his way. I know vision is the way of God. Vision is what? The way of God. I love this uh, uh, translation. It said, he give the reject his hand. The humble. He give the reject his hand and lead them step by step. You see, step by step. He will start from step two. It will be step by step. A little here, a little there. And remember, he's a gentle spirit. He cannot deal with your pride. So he leave you alone. But this year, he will not leave you alone. Amen. May the good hand of God be with you. Amen. May you finish this year strong. The word of God you have received, if you put it to practice, is more than enough. That, those words create the whole universe that you are trying to make a sense of it. That word will guide you this year. Amen. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You are there, you are not born again. It takes meekness to receive Jesus. There is something that tells you that your guidance, the guidance of yourself is sufficient for you. But that's a lie of the devil. You didn't make yourself. You need Jesus to hold your hand. And guide you step by step. This morning, if you are willing, I would like to lead you to a prayer of repentance. And you'll be born again. you become one of the sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are willing, pray this simple prayer for me. It's with me, it's a prayer of confession. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into, my, come into my life. I'm inviting you today to come and forgive me my sin and trespasses. Wash me with your precious blood. Jesus, I am a sinner, but today I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth the perfect work of Calvary that is more than enough to atone for my sin. Forgive me my sin and write my name in the book of life and count me among your own. Thank you, faithful Father, for in Jesus' precious name I made this confession. Amen. Amen. You are born again now, as simple as that. It is only a proud man that will say it's not enough. The God you offend has made this provision for your atonement. So you are saved. Look for a pastor or a Bible-believing church and begin to go so that you can be guided. Also, you can check on the, on the screen right now and see our order of services and please endeavor to visit us. Look for me so that I can guide you and you become an adult as I have been guided. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord prosper you. May the Lord give you the desire of your heart. Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. I believe this morning we are going to give our offering. You see the voice of restoration, pay B number is out. I know you are used to the old one, but when instruction comes, let us respond to the instruction. This is the voice of restoration, money, glory, pay bill. We want to separate so that we can develop this platform further and see what we can give to it. Praise uh, what he can offer you better. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Therefore, give your mo this morning offering on this pay bill. And at the same time, we are on this platform, we are doing thanksgiving. And I also ask you to sow your seed of thanksgiving on this platform. This platform has been of a tremendous help to our spirit man from me that lead to the leg. And I know many times you have come on this platform and your soul have been revived, your re you have heard the voice of restoration that gave you energy for that day victory. Why don't you return like the one leper that came back and give thanks, quality seed, on this platform to say, God, thank you. 
I travel with you, and this was one of the platform that you used to be a blessing to me in the year 2020. And give that thanksgiving. You know what you do? You open your life for a greater blessing. Also, you won't have a sacrifice to make, put it here. You also have a donation so that we could have more equipment that will make and, and that will make us to have more better facility that will serve you better. Make your donation on it. Let's build it together. As we reach you, join us to reach other. May the Lord bless you and accept your offering this morning. All of you who have given your Thanksgiving offering, your sacrifice, God bless you all wherever you are across the across the nation in diaspora. We've started receiving your offering on this platform, your Thanksgiving, your sacrificial giving, and also a donation to make this platform better. As you make it better, when God created that future, you will not be left out. Have a great day. Have a wonderful time as we come on Friday on a new platform. Sorry, uh, Friday is a, is a Christmas day. There will be no money glory. We'll be going for Christmas service. But as soon as that is over, we come back. name is so shall you hear the voice of your restoration in jesus precious name have a great time merry christmas in advance amen and god bless